Here. I'm here. Joe Murray? Here. Indiana? Here. Grandma McCurry? Here. Evan? Here. Mr. Penninger? Here. Okay. Um, we don't have any public comment uh, for this evening. I'm going to go right into the uh, resolutions. Richard, you have a report on superintend this report regarding transportation I do. Yeah, uh, just a couple of items so um just briefly transportation last week was a, a little bit of a world um, we found out about the drivers so first of all we talked about wednesday night that we did have a driver it was from the sta and uh, sta immediately followed their protocol the driver was from uh, neighboring county our county doing the investigation so it had some blips and we didn't get information right away ultimately we got word uh late friday that the driver was cleared all drivers were clear there and there were no students that were affected by it that were never in the proximity of it so overall it worked out quickly um, so sda's problem wasn't necessarily that one driver it was several drivers that no longer were employed there that had left the position abruptly and then a couple of the drivers quarantined <laughs> We had a tremendous shortage Friday and Monday. So I was asked to uh, make a decision if we were going to transport only elementary, no one. And I really had said at that time, when we got our team together, Mr. Capri was with us and said elementary will support because child care and then. So uh, this, after, this morning, we were uh, assured by transportation, STA, that they had enough drivers to transport everyone tomorrow. So we sent a message out to everyone. K to 12 will be transported tomorrow. Normal runs, uh, they have drivers they're using and um, we'll be able to staff it. So um, that was a positive. Uh, it just leaves us that we know um, we're gonna run into this throughout the year. You know, we have to make sure we're working with them. Um, we wanna talk about wages. We wanna talk about what they're doing to recruit. Um, you know, it's, it's concerning because um, we knew transportation would be an issue. It's been running fairly smooth, uh, but this definitely set us uh, into a tough position. So um, at this point, we're in good shape and we're transporting tomorrow. Um, one of the issues that I just want to talk about too is we talked about equity and why we decided to keep it remote for everyone in, in secondary. Uh, our concern was that if you only had parents who could drive their kids in, you might have a very limited number of children to come to school. So then those teachers would be just teaching maybe a tenth of the kids where the rest are home. And then that remote instruction is going to be, you know, really limited because those teachers have to spend time with the kids physically there. So we felt it was important to go remote only for everyone in secondary. It's something we'll review each time, but for us it was that equity reason for those that couldn't get here that would make it so everybody got remote with that teacher's attention. So and the most important thing was uh, getting younger kids in. So um, I'm sure we'll run into it in the future. We'll learn from it. Um, I, you know, look for any feedback we have. We're hopeful that we don't, but um, it's the reality of the times that a lot of those drivers are over 55 or 65 and, and they have concerns. They get family telling them that they shouldn't go in. And so it's it's hard and it's a national issue. So. I say this respectfully and I hope that this doesn't come across the wrong way, but you saying that, I know we're gonna run into this in the future. This should not be something that is acceptable on any platform. No, no it's not. Um, it's not, but I think it's a, that reality that drivers are going to call in sick or, you know, so. And if this had been a new occurrence, I would agree with you, but this has just been an ongoing downhill spiral that we've been experiencing with these folks. Yeah. So I really get very, very concerned that we should not be canceling our classes because we can't get our kids to school. Right. Um, unfortunately, yeah. the, the, the only problem is here, there are only options. So what other solutions do we have? But I think that that's what we need to do is be more solution oriented versus accepting of it. So we have preliminary discuss, obviously, in the next capital project. Doing a group action to look at the feasibility survey as far as we're going to It's going to be a big capital outlet, but then we've got a couple of things going because we have the capital. The governor's initiative was trying to limit, it, limit the capital on projects, but obviously I think he should be understanding at this point there is a driver shortage, but then we're actually will be faced with how do we retain 
Yeah. So well, we offer better benefits, yeah. state retirement, the state retirement, multiple state positions. Retirement. They can do custodial work, they can do mm -hmm. aid work, and then drive and have you know split positions that are much more appealing to people. So I think from that perspective, we can do much better. CDA, CDTA was something that was looked into as well as an option that I always you know working with, and that was part of our conversation with Paul Tano. Um, he had started that conversation, so we're looking at options, but nothing short term. Really, we're in this you know for this year. We, so, and we held off with that contract till last Monday, you know, really trying to work through it. So, and we, and we had, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm still I was just gonna say, can we place more focus and energy on those CDTA contracts? And even, I mean, I'm sure you've had discussions with BOCES and things along those lines as well. I mean, are they able to offer any sense of relief? I guess you could say it's always that capacity issue, and it's. BOCES is often short drivers and mechanics because they're servicing Johnstown and Motorsville. And when we looked at CTE and we were having difficulty with our kids getting out there, we had looked into BOCES buses providing extra support for our kids, and it just didn't exist. Um, we had uh, one of the uh, directors from BOCES came here, and I was Mr. and myself, and we're through it trying to see if we could get the kids on one of those buses, and they just don't have the capacity out there. So, it's something we're constantly looking at. But, um, we look at third party contracts that are one of the ones tonight when we can get assistance from like amazing grace for some special education months so it doesn't tie up an entire bus for us or just one or two children. But um, it, no, it's not something, I, I don't want you to think it's something I'm accepting of. It's, it's not acceptable. And Colleen and I worked all summer meeting with, uh, you know, SDN. I sent you guys an email that we tried to get to the root of it to work through the runs, that we have training for our staff, that we sat down with them to make sure, you know, the accuracy of those lists, our principals and needs did a great job calling parents. So we've been proactive in addressing it to try to reduce the runs to make it, you know, the most students on the bus at a time in, in, in a safe environment. So I feel like we've done everything we can, but we're at the mercy of SDA providing drivers. You know, so that came Thursday at two o'clock to say, 40% of our AIDS drivers are not going to be in. Like, how do you, or you can't really respond to it except to try to prioritize getting the kids in the building. Um, so I understand it, and it's frustrating for us. Um, I'm open to any ideas that we are in those two options, but those are down the road. Well, the interesting thing is uh, things are fluid right now, and it's not like you have um, a game game to, to follow and if there was a request from a board member in regard to the numbers of children virtually or online and I'm sure that that's something that you can gather and it wasn't gathered for tonight but I'm sure that you can gather that and probably by the time the next board meeting those numbers would change anyway so yeah you can if you can you know work on that that would be great um, any other questions from the board regarding that? Uh, the question, not necessarily a question, but to um, <clears throat> add to what uh, Mr. Roberti was talking about when you look at the, the uh, probability of having uh, remote learning or not knowing how many students are in the building. I supported that decision, even though I had two kids that would rather be here, and I right. would rather not be here. Right. But then, <clears throat> We don't know how many kids will be here or students will be here. Right. We do know that we can get everyone remotely. Right. Uh, right. And again, yeah. and that is only when uh, once in a lifetime of these, these like this happen. Yeah. Yeah. I'm right with Vienna and concerns about what about the future. Yeah. I think now, um, I don't know if we have any type of opting out in the contract. So we are with SDA, we, we are with them right until the contract ends. So we have to think about uh, On the other hand, if they right. don't perform their, their duties, that should be, from a legal perspective, you would think an opportunity to mm -hmm. sever a contract. Right. Just it's a it will, but being such a large right. corporation, I'm sure yeah. we've had this no, I, situation I before, and they're able to fight some justice, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, rather be uh, hung up in arbitration all this time. Yeah. Well, we don't have a lot of leverage, though, because we have no backup. Like that. There, right. There is right. no. Actually, we should make our lucky stars that all of the teachers are able to do the remote with everybody in a case of emergency because they don't lose that time. 
like you said, your sons, even though they'd rather be here. Yeah, but it's a great point. It's it's, it's, it's terrible to go back and forth so quickly. That can't be easy yeah. for the teachers either to have right. that happen. You know, and this didn't exist at that time last year, so something happened. You know, in snow days, you right. can teach on snow days now. Like, you know, things like that. Right. It's, a, it's a positive of that. Yeah. Um, we did the Free Ocean Education Survey. We're working on tomorrow. We had talked about it last meeting, so that's going to be for how many are utilizing it to ask parents to you know get an idea again because if we can find out for sure that the next time this will occur, if we know that only twenty percent parents are actually using transportation, well then we know that it's not the worst thing that you know, so maybe we do limited buses. They, so. The drivers should know. They have lists of have students. Lists. They yeah. check them on when they board. They so yeah, yeah, and we utilize that list when we have that driver issue. We yeah. Do. Every day they took attendance and follow the procedure, which is really important. So we can take it from that list. But I, I want parent uh, feedback too, so we can get a few questions on that. Um, just about you know concerns, feedback on if it's positive or negative experience, um, when they utilize it. Know, how often, or is it every day, or a.m. p.m.? So, this could be just some kid, like my kids come home in the bus and they don't go to school with us, so I drop some off. So, that throws numbers up, I'm sure, yeah. for, for us too. So, we, do want, we want to know that if we can reduce runs. So, but we'll keep working on it. We, spent, we really spent a lot of time this summer working on it, really held out until a week ago to mm -hmm. sign the actual contract and got reductions in the whole thing. So, um, last thing I want to talk about food service. So, we also spent a lot of time working with Bob Barton those from uh, folks from Abbey Group. Uh, Colleen and I had a meeting with full of officers. Mr. Roberti? Yes. Before you move off of the transportation, I would like to ask a couple of questions myself. First off, I agree with uh, Ms. Dittata about the teachers, especially. Um, but I'm concerned because I see the buses are going, they're still rolling to the middle school up at St. Mary's. They take the seventh and eighth graders up there. I see the people with the outside contracts, Whispering Pines, they have no problems. I'm looking at the other STA uh, schools that are running, and they're not having this issue like we are. Um, we are the big, the big block to them. We are the big district. For some reason, we're not acting like the big district. All these outsiders or these outside contracts that they have, they're fulfilling them before they even look at us. We're the people that are spending the money. We're the people that this past spring we went and asked Colleen how much money we've given them to sustain them because the governor asked us to do that. And state ed uh, put it down that we could put in and pay them. And we've not been reimbursed for that money. And yet they're treating us like we're the stepchildren. And look at the other contracts that they have and how they're fulfilling them. Something's the matter. Something is amok. Hopefully one of them is listening tonight. I hope they're not listening to your diatribe about the issue of, uh, uh, you know, maybe it's not good having them because we just need to make them responsible. We're the big district. We're the largest contract, I'm sure, that they deal with. Well, these other small districts get fulfillment, but we don't. Something is a month. That's all I have. Thank you. All right. Um, I'm going to just get over to uh, Joe. You may mention briefly about uh, transportation contracts. And there are three of them here. Um, one is for uh, grounds or regular contract for students. Another one is a special ed contract uh, for most likely a student with disability. And then the third one is Amazing Grace. Um, coming, Richard, do you want to mention anything about why these contracts are coming forward now? So every year we have to renew our contract, obviously, with our transportation company, and we have to submit that to state ed. In order to get reimbursed, we have to submit these contracts within 90 days from the first date of transportation. Okay. So as Mr. Roberti said, we spent a lot of time this summer um, negotiating it. Um, they would have obviously it would have liked the cpi increase on last year's rate which would have been close to 3.6 million but obviously with the changes that occurred in the runs that we've reduced and whatnot we arrived at a mutual number of 3.3 a little over 3.3 million so in order for us to supply those to state ed we have to break them down by our regular ed routes and then we have to break them down by our special ed routes so when you look at the cost of the special ed routes you can see that's close to 1.2 million and then our other um, regular routes are 2.2. Um, and then the Amazing Grace. So I'm going to give you a little history on the Amazing Grace. We put that out to bid. 
only one person bid on the contract. So you're hoping that you're going to gather more people calling. We got a lot of calls in, um, but nobody would take the contract except the Macy Grace. What is it for you think that so few actually bid if they all were calling you and inquiring? I asked after that, and they, they just once you gave them all the details, they said, no. Really? Yeah. Because I'd be curious, almost like I'd like to have a conversation with them and say, what was it that wasn't appealing? Because perhaps we need to look at that too as a. As but now it is. We're not restricting. So when you know in the bid process, we're yeah. not restricting them. Right? Yeah. Um, and this is a special that's stupid um, in our first time. Yeah. One's doing it next week. Maybe in there. They don't have the resources to just set aside for one person. We're amazing. Grace just started doing this for us last year. So I think they're branching out into different services. Just being with me and a company. Right. Okay. Any other questions regarding the transportation contract? Um, we have resolution uh, 207 for the purposes of voting. 208 is uh, speech position. And 209 is transportation contract. And 210 would be going into executive session. Do I have, do we have to vote on these separately, Mr. Mizek? No, uh, the first resolution is uh, the combination resolution. It'll be 207 through 210. Was 210 going into executive session with work history and group personnel? Can you read for me? I, I have no paperwork where I'm at right now or an agenda. Can you read for me 207, 208, and 209, please? All right, 207 is a resolution to combine resolutions 207 through 210. 208 is the um, abolition of the speech position. 209 is transportation contracts, and 210 is uh, to go into executive session. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Do I have a sponsor? I will. Gavin. All right, I will take the roll call. Mr. Battisti? Yes. Joe Murray? Yes. Deanna? Yes. Redmond? Yes. Gavin? Yes. Mr. Paminger? Yes. Yes. Okay, so at approximately 6.23, we'll be going into executive session. Oh, there we hey. go. Hi, guys. Hello. Hello. <laughs> All right, at 6.40, we are out of executive session. Do I have a sponsor for resolution 211? I will. I will sponsor it. All right, Curtis, you can sponsor it. All right, I'm going to take the roll call. This is the resolution. So that the Board of Education authorize and offer a $10,000 retirement incentive to Don Norman and all items associated with the contract. I'm going to do a roll call. Mr. Battisti? Yes. Joe Marie? Yes. Deanna? Yes. Reverend? Yes. Gavin? Yes. Curtis? Yes. Dr. Bush? Yes. Okay, passed. Do I have um, uh, do I have a sponsor to end the meeting? Motion. A motion to adjourn. Yes. All right, Kent. 640. 641. Motion right. by yep. Kent to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned. Thank you very much for coming to the special meeting. Hey, good night, Good night, Don. Right on. Thank you. Good night, John. Thank you again. Thanks again. Yeah, okay. thank you. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. Remember, 